Overspending on credit cards can be a huge problem for people, but an even bigger problem nowadays is council tax debt. Local authorities are often resorting to bailiffs to recover what they're owed. But is this approach too heavy-handed, especially when some people simply find themselves unable to pay? We sent Mark Jordan to investigate. The Clink Prison Museum. For centuries, its bars held traitors, thieves and debtors. The traitors were executed. But for debtors, the only way they'd ever walk free was to pay up in full. But how to do that behind bars with mounting weekly jail charges? The rat man, unable to pay, ate rats until he died. This is a grim place. So why is it that a leading London barrister thinks many councils are using similar tactics to bring in their council tax debt? Council tax is Britain's biggest personal debt problem and it's growing. Coming? Some local authorities are going down the road of bankruptcy, making people insolvent, which um, hugely multiplies their debt, with the consequences that they lose their homes, their businesses. It is utterly devastating. It's probably in some ways actually worse than but now than being jailed for council tax default. To be honest, I'm losing sleep, I'm anxious, I've got a lot of anxiety. The worst cases I've uh, been involved with myself, people have actually committed suicide. Four years ago, Peter Williams brought trains to a halt after killing himself on the railway. His home had been taken away for failing to pay £1,350 over council tax debt. The problem was Peter was mentally ill and nobody realised this at the time and as a result he was literally hounded to death over what was a relatively small amount of money, £1,350, which was inflated to over £70,000 by, by the time of his death. It was all costs. He'd paid his council tax, this was all costs. I'm seeing this kind of stress repeated every week now around England and Wales. My court case. Oh. Contact us now to avoid further action and costs. In the past two years, court action for council tax debt has risen 40%. Use of bailiffs is also up. Notice of removal action, that means we're coming to get you. That's your copy there. It's, we've not received any payments whatsoever. I'm struggling at the same time and I just want to feed my child, I just want to eat, that's, that's all. I require a payment today. You've got just over a £1,000 to pay. So what are you offering now? 97% of us pay our council tax bill, but debt campaigners claim over 200,000 bailiff visits were made in London to those who don't. The figures show, if you look at boroughs across London and in fact across England and Wales, that there's very different practice uh, in different boroughs. It's a postcode lottery. Westminster Council sent bailiffs out over 18,000 times, while Havering was a tenth of that. In less than a decade, government grants to councils have been cut by a third. Whoever you're looking for, it's not me. That's not my Westminster and several other councils declined to be interviewed, but all insist they avoid targeting the vulnerable, only using bailiffs when sustainable repayment plans have failed. I'm asking a simple question. But single unemployed mum, Michelle, is watching her £86 council tax debt spiral. It escalated to £608.75 from £86.75, yeah. I don't know how that happened. It's bad enough that you have to pay that debt and then they've chucked that on. And I'm thinking, well, if I can't pay that, how am I supposed to pay that on top? What is it you want from me? It's the councils who decide if Dave the bailiff comes a-knocking. Is there any difference in the way you work between can't pay or won't pay? No, that's not my business. The system does not distinguish at all now between the can't payers and won't payers. The council tax has become a kind of Frankenstein's monster. For all intents and purposes, the local authority has now taken over uh, in terms of council tax by its computers. It's the computer which calculates your bill and is in charge of every step of the way. 
it's almost like the Terminator films in that respect, with enforcement processes which just go on and on. One exceptional week, Franklin earned £170 on his zero-hour contract job, so the council computer cancelled his council tax benefit. They sent me an assessment saying that I earned £170 a week so I can afford to pay it. You know, and I said, no, I'm not. Some weeks I was earning £20 a week. Franklin says he couldn't afford the full council tax now being charged, and the bailiffs are knocking. I'm trying to better myself. I am diagnosed with heart failure and kidney failure. I've got multiple organ failure. And I thought, let me go out and get a job, you know, for the last years and try to better myself, you know. And this is why this is the obstacle why people don't want to work because they're a hassle, not because they're lazy, it's because of a hassle that they get from the government. Uh, the letterbox is jammed up, so uh, in some cases where it's impossible to get the money back, then uh, there's nothing else we can do. Are you finding that more and more? Yes, yes. People haven't got the means to pay. Mike Thompson was a bookseller until a devastating illness meant he could barely work. His council tax debt would take his home and lead to recovery costs 30 times the original arrears of 2,900. The council forced the sale of the house. I got just over £6,000 as my share of the proceeds. The other £85,000, £86,000 was swallowed up in the debt itself, plus all the costs that had accumulated along the way. Now Mike lives in sheltered social housing. And guess who's paying? Now the government foots full housing benefit for me, which is currently about eight and a half thousand a year. The lawyers who do this business for local authorities prosper mightily, but the local authorities themselves actually, in the great scheme of things, actually lose out big time. At Hammersmith and Fulham Council, they've begun to wonder if bankrupting, seizure of homes and use of bailiffs is working. They claim bailiffs only recover 30% of council tax debt, and are getting rid of them from April. If a family is trying to keep the bailiffs away and then prioritises the bill for council tax, they then might miss their rental payment and then you're left with a homeless family um, being traumatised but then presenting the public sector with a huge bill in terms of rehousing and all the other impacts homelessness can have. Good morning, you're through to Yetta at First Credit, how can I help? First Credit are in charge of Hammersmith's ethical new debt collection. We don't add any interest or charges to the balance. Like TV money advisors, they set up a payment plan. We would never um, look to sort of pursue any bailiffs or... Uh, I'm hoping for Hammersmith, they will end up with the same amount of money collected or more, which they can get back to the residents. And I'm already seeing, on cases they've given up on, I'm already collecting money on cases they've given up on. So I know that will give them more money back for their residents, which is a win-win. Are you worried that some people might go out and buy a telly rather than pay the council tax if you're ethical? I am very optimistic that this will work. We are not stopping debt collection. We are just doing debt collection in an ethical way. But the bailiff industry warned Hammersmith's experiment will backfire. The civil enforcement industry has collected about, around about £650 million worth of local authority debt. To dispense with the enforcement service will come at a price. I think that in two or three years' time, uh, the coffers will be looked at and the question will be asked, where's the money? Yeah, they'll come up with all sorts of excuses. Then you can normally read them, whether or not they're lying or not. Well, I can anyway. Now, ethical debt collection in Hammersmith is about to show whether or not the bailiff's knock might, like the clink, become part of debt collecting history. Hey.